Kentucky's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives celebrate electric vehicles with the Great EV Road Trip. The board approves capital credits for the first time in EKPC's history. Workers near completion of the Dell Station demolition and Farmers RECC brings a bright future to students at the Barron County Innovation Zone. I'm Shay Phillips and together we'll take a look at all of this in the summer edition of Power Pulse. The era of the electric vehicle is here. To celebrate, co-ops created a goodwill tour of Kentucky driving the all-electric Chevy Bolt. The trips highlighted the low cost of fuel and maintenance of EVs, along with environmental benefits and increased driving ranges. In the spring, Corey Ramsey and the Kentucky team drove from Bowling Green to Owensboro. They ate breakfast at Farm Boy Restaurant in Morgantown. They visited the home of Bill Monroe on Jerusalem Ridge and even played Blue Moon of Kentucky at the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame in Owensboro. While they visited the museum, the team recharged the car at the nearby Hampton Inn. I think the co-ops have always led the charge on technology in Kentucky as far back as the light bulb. And so now with this electric vehicle technology, the Chevy Bolts and other electric vehicles that will be coming into the Commonwealth, it is good that they are leading the charge with this example, this road trip to say here's the way that you can do it, we've proven you can do it, and it's co-ops leading the way. On the second trip, Sarah Fellows of Nolan RECC and Leslie Neely from Kenergy traveled east from Nolan's headquarters. They stopped at Lincoln's Boyhood Home, the Kentucky Railway Museum, and at the world famous Maker's Mark Distillery to recharge the car. People from all around the globe visit Maker's Mark to walk around the grounds where the Samuels family revolutionized the bourbon industry. The entire campus of Maker's Mark is powered by Intercounty Energy, which has worked closely with the famous distillery on the visitor charging station. For Maker's, it's a tourism draw, um, and for other places as well like this, either whether it's here, whether it's Walmart, whether it's Kroger, the ones that we provide electricity to, I think it's just a matter of meeting the needs of our members, their members, their customers, and just an overall view of what the future holds years down the road. It's better to be in front of it than behind it, and that's kind of what we intend to do. After leaving Maker's Mark, the team visited employees at Taylor County RECC. They popped the hood and were excited to learn it only costs three to four cents a mile to charge the bolt. After lunch at Betty's Country Cooking in Columbia, they met friends from South Kentucky RECC at the Niagara of the South, beautiful Cumberland Falls. Next, they visited Sanders Cafe, birthplace of the world famous finger licking good Kentucky Fried Chicken. At the end of the day, they plugged into a new charging station installed by Jackson Energy in London, one of Kentucky's first co-op charge station projects. The next day, the team visited Jackson Energy in Manchester, stopped in the quiet community of Thousand Sticks, went to Buckhorn Lake in Perry County, the Red River Gorge, and L81. They enjoyed meeting with Clark Energy employees before ending the day at Cooperative Solar Farm One. A third and final trip went from central to northern Kentucky, featuring Mike Stafford from Owen Electric and Jerry James from the Explore Kentucky Initiative. The trip started at Shelby Energy, then went to the new Diageo Distillery in Shelbyville, the grave of Daniel Boone at Frankfurt Cemetery, and then the Kentucky Speedway, which is served by Owen Electric. Mike Stafford drove the bolt several times around the Speedway track. The final stop of the trip was a visit to the Ark Encounter, where more than one million people visit a replica of Noah's Ark, an engineering marvel built to the actual size described in the Bible. The Great EV Road Trip covered more than 700 miles and reached 176,000 people with positive messages about electric vehicles. Look for a feature story on the trip in the October Kentucky Living Magazine. At the end of 2018, the Farm Bill was signed into law, which greatly improved the financial outlook for EKPC and its owner-member cooperatives. 
Executive Vice President and CFO Mike McNally explains. So back in 2017, we had weak results because of mild weather, and we saw that trend continuing into 2018. By mid-2018, we were pretty sure we were going to need a significant base rate increase. How did things change with the passage of the Farm Bill? The Farm Bill is a very big piece of legislation that authorizes RUS and all of its programs, among many other things. Uh, the Farm Bill contained an important change to the RUS Cushion of Credit program, and that made all the difference in our rate case planning. What is the Cushion of Credit? The Cushion of Credit is a unique program that RUS has, authorized by legislation, that allows borrowers like East Kentucky to put money into the deposit account and earn a 5% rate of return. 5% is a pretty good number these days. It has been for several years. So we had $500 million in the Cushion of Credit through mid-2018, and that was earning $25 million a year in interest income. It cost us about $10 million to have that $500 million invested there because we borrowed that money. So we were making about $15 million a year net on the cushion of credit, and that $15 million a year was helping us avoid a rate increase. By mid-2018, Congress was looking at eliminating the cushion of credit program, which would eliminate that interest income, and that was what was driving the last bit of the need for a rate increase last year. What changes did they make to the cushion of credit? Probably the most significant for East Kentucky was the change to the cushion of credit that allowed us to take our existing balance in that account, which was $500 million, and use that to repay our U.S. and FFB debt without the make whole penalty. The make whole penalty is a significant cost that prevented us really from repaying debt early. That debt had high interest rates and we couldn't refinance it at current low interest rates with, without making that penalty. Now that Congress has eliminated that, we can make those payments, reduce our total interest costs. How does that benefit members at the end of the lines? Well, most significantly, when you put the whole package together of refinancings, it resulted in enough savings and enough improvement in our credit metrics that East Kentucky no longer needed the base rate increase we were considering. That increase was $39 million, so a $39 million rate increase is no longer necessary. That's a huge benefit to the members, and it also continues to keep us competitive with our neighboring utilities by not raising our rates to match theirs. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I'd like to thank all of East Kentucky's employees for their hard work in continuing to improve East Kentucky's performance. The Board of Directors, of course, was very engaged in this entire process, and I'd like to thank them for their work as well. Um, beyond that, we had great help from Congressman Rogers going back many years on this entire issue. The whole congressional delegation in Kentucky stepped up to help with the Farm Bill, and Mitch McConnell led the effort to get it passed, which was so important to East Kentucky. Now we're one of the largest and most successful GNTs in the country, thanks to everybody pulling together. In 2016, Dell Station ceased operations, and last year EKPC began a project to tear down and remove the stacks and powerhouse of the co-op's oldest power plant. For six months last year, workers completed the removal of asbestos from the maze of piping at the two-acre site. The work involved the meticulous cutting of pipes and equipment, and most of the material is being sold into the scrap metal market. After stripping out the old generating equipment, workers removed the structural frame of the turbine hall. Teams then used heavy equipment to remove the deaerator tanks and the coal bunkers. Most of Dell Station's powerhouse, along with the 150-foot tall stacks, are scheduled to be on the ground by midsummer. Because of the plant's close proximity to the road and the community of Ford, the stacks were mostly removed by hand. Moving from top to bottom on scaffolding, workers chipped away at the bricks and pushed them into the center of the stacks until they reached the bottom and demolished the remainder. Safety has been the number one priority, along with working closely with nearby residents to keep them informed. EKPC thanks the workers who've done a great job on the demolition, especially employees Cliff Harmon and Russell Marshall, who have been on site nearly every day. One of the economic development initiatives of co-ops is the Source STEM program that is helping to create the world's largest technically trained workforce right here in Kentucky. And Farmers RECC is participating in a new Source STEM program that is helping to bring a bright future to students of South Central Kentucky at the Barron County Innovation Zone. The 44,000 square foot Innovation Zone in itself is a marvel, a career, technology, and sports complex. Students from kindergarten to high school engage in hands-on learning projects in computer science, engineering, 
robotics, and other fields. They help local leaders solve problems like developing mobile apps that provide early warnings of high water issues. They also partner with local industries on a wide variety of projects, like producing parts on 3D printers. The students use the Project Lead the Way curriculum that makes learning fun. In just one year, Project Lead the Way has added 105 new schools in Kentucky. We also are big on just making sure that students develop those 21st century skills that are needed today for the workforce and that we continue to hear kids are, are, the young students are lacking today and that would be the communication, critical thinking, problem solving and, and collaboration skills. The co-ops have been phenomenal in working with me. They understand the importance of a project-based education. They understand that companies like Toyota, Lockheed Martin and those sort of companies are really standing up and taking notice of Project Lead the Way students. For years, Farmers RECC has been a strong supporter of programming in the Barron County Schools, and the Innovation Zone promises to be another major success. It gives our kids so many more opportunities when they get out of school. Um, it prepares them um, when they go into the, to the workforce. They're already ready. Um, they're ready for whatever comes next. So it helps our community grow, um, industries that come into our area. Um, they, they see the effort and the investment that we've made um, in the future workforce and, and it makes us just more marketable for industries. That's it for this edition of Power Pulse. We leave you with highlights from the 2019 Special Olympics Summer Games, sponsored by Kentucky's Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Until next time, remember, safety is the right thing to do.